Today our learning objective is to label muscles on a diagram. Today we will continue to look at the skeleton but look more closely at the role muscles play when supporting the skeleton with protection and movement. Watch the BBC clip about skeletons below. What did you learn from it? Record new facts in your book. Watch the BBC clip about muscles being needed for movement below. What did you learn from it? Record new facts in your book. Look at the diagrams carefully. Can you find your bicep muscles and triceps muscle in your arm? Move your arm up and down. What happens to your muscles? What happens to the bicep muscle when you move your fist to your shoulder? What happens to the tricep muscle at the same time? Can you use the words contract and extend? Task 1. Draw, label and explain what the muscles do when the arm is pulled towards your shoulder. Have a look carefully at the diagram. Uh, use the vocabulary such as muscles, triceps, which is under your arm, the biceps, which are like on top of your upper arm, contracts is when your muscle bulges and extends is when our muscle stretches and flattens out. Task two, draw, label and explain what the muscles do when the arm is pushed away from the shoulder. Remember, use the vocabulary to the right. So we've got muscles, and again, the tricep is the muscle underneath the arm at the back. The bicep is the muscle on top in front of your arm. When a muscle contracts, it will bulge, and when it extends, it will be flatter. We're going to read the example model about the human body. Collect key language and layout features <coughs> of the non chronological report. Can you find the layout features? They are the title, the introduction or hook, facts boxes, subheadings, diagrams and captions, interesting pictures, the glossary, facts box, facts box boxes. Strong enough to excavate soil as hard as concrete. Tough enough to defy a lion's ferocious snack attack. The powerful pangolin. For decades, pangolins have had people puzzled. What were these strange creatures? Now we know these scaly, toothless creatures are actually mammals. Special suit. Unlike all other mammals, the pangolin is covered in scales, but don't let their armoured plates trick you into thinking they have an exoskeleton. Oh no, the pangolin is in fact a vertebrate with an endoskeleton. When attacked, it cleverly rolls in a tight ball to shield itself from predators. The startled pangolin covers its head with its front, front legs rolls up and uses its sharp scaly tail to lash its attack to, to lash its attacker wham even a lion struggles to open the packed lunchbox keratin these scaly plates are made up of a substance called keratin similarly human hair and nails are made of keratin yet these do not form part of our skeleton so Although the pangolin's scaly plates are very hard and protective, they are not classed as an exoskeleton either. Exoskeleton, a skeleton on the, sorry, endoskeleton, a skeleton on the inside of the body. Exoskeleton, a skeleton on the outside of the body. Invertebrate. 
an animal without a backbone. Keratin, a hard pro protein, hair and nails are made of it. Mammal, animals, animals that are warm blooded with fur or hair. Predator, an animal that lives mostly by killing and eating other animals. A vertebrae, an animal with a backbone. Favourite food ants. If you hate creeping critters, then you'll love the pangolin. The sticky tongued scuffer guzzles in excess of 70 million insects per year. Each night it uses its hugely powerful front claws to rip open rock hard ant termite nests to raid the succulent insects inside. Mmm. Tongue tastic. Have you ever seen your granny without her teeth in? Well, the pangolin doesn't have any teeth either. Instead, it uses its long sticky tongue to slurp up its dinner. Pangolin facts. When it is fully extended, a pangolin's tongue can be up to 16 inches longer than its body. How far can you stick your tongue out? The word pangolin comes from the Mayan word Pengulang, meaning roller. Using the text we've just read, now focus on the vocabulary and magpies, magpies some examples. Can you find complex sentences using if, when and as? Sentences using sometimes, often, most, usually, the majority. Technical subject specific for vocabulary. Using the text you've just read, now focus on the vocabulary and mag magpies some more examples from the text. This time, can you find a variety of noun phrases or pronouns to avoid repetition? Specific adjectives, precise verbs, or more importantly, facts and statistics. Final task. Watch the video below about pangolins and collect five to six facts. Record them neatly in your books. Remember to post your work online so we can mark it. Well done, everyone.